So respect, uh, the five reasons we don't get respect in the one way that we can. We typically don't give respect to people who say, do as I say and not as I do. And it's hard to give those people respect because we don't necessarily find them credible. Because if what they're suggesting that we do uh, is effective or is good enough for, for me to do, why isn't why why is it that they are not doing it themselves and so we don't we typically don't give those people 100% respect that say do as i say not as i do we also don't give people respect when they typically give us the answer because i said so most of us and, and in most of our, our our relationships and most of our dealings um have the time and the opportunity to provide people with uh, adequate information, and so when we don't get adequate information, the the person giving the order or giving the the command is suspect in in terms of what their motivations are, and so uh, we typically don't give those people respect because deep inside we say if you're you're credible or if you're um, uh, above board, you should be able to give me enough information that will convince me to uh, to be a part of what you, what it is that you're suggesting or to to follow the rules that you're you're given. Now, I I will say that this particular concept of because I said so is contextual, right? So in most cases, like I said earlier, we we have the opportunity and the time to give people adequate information. However, there are times when we don't have time to give people adequate information particularly in emergency circumstances or situations, we don't have time to explain a lot of the stuff that we're doing. And so uh, if there's a fire in the building, I may just tell my students or I may tell the people that I'm in charge of, look, um, we need to exit this building now. And um, so I need for you to, to just do that. And later, it will I will have time to, you know, make the declaration or make the 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 object of my my commands clear but in that moment what i'm trying to do is to make sure people are safe but we can't operate in that way as our default um mode of communication we can't always be in an in an emergency um and so we we have to make sure that we're planning that we're in relationships with folks so that when those emergencies come up they will trust us without question and, uh, and that, that that trust is, is well earned. Next, um, people will say, you have to earn my respect. And in my experience, the, um, the process of earning someone's respect is nebulous at best, right? So it's, um, it, it's very shaky, it's very faulty, it changes, it shifts on a number um, of, of levels given the context or the priority of, of what is being asked of me. And so the only surefire way to, to actually get respect is to give respect. And respect has to be given if it's going to be authentic. It has to be given even in the face of disrespect. And when we respect people, even in the face of disrespect, what that does is it creates an atmosphere where people can start being brave, when people can um, start moving beyond looking at the, themselves as the center of attention, and it, and it alleviates narcissism. And so th that becomes important, that people give respect even in the, the, the face of disrespect. And then, you know, number number. Four, we typically say that we don't respect people who will will pass the buck, and so some people will say, "Well, that's not my baby," or "That's not my responsibility." And what we know in terms of the, the folks that we we respect is that folks typically do things. We respect folks who do things that may not necessarily be a part of their job responsibility or may not necessarily be something that they're paid for, but they do it because there's commitment to the larger community. There's a commitment to the larger goal. And that is what we, we, we tend to, to respect in individuals. And then lastly, we, uh, we don't give respect in, 
or it's difficult to, to respect someone because what we don't understand is that disrespect is actually a form of violence. And so when violence is enacted, what is the emotional state of the person who has just received the, that, that violent act? Typically, it is, it is fear, shame, embarrassment, it's retaliation, it's hate, it's hurt. And what I would suggest is that those are the same emotional states that people have when they have been disrespected. Um, when folks have been disrespected, not only are they not being healed of, of hurt, it is actually deepening and hardening um, their heart towards that individual or towards that 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 goal or organization and so we have to be mindful that disrespect is a form of violence and so to get respect we have to give it and we have to give it even in the face of of disrespect and so these five ways of of not getting respect if we keep these in mind then it's much easier for us to uh, make sure that people around us get the respect that they deserve just because they exist